Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the JVM internal series. Today we are going to talk about some of the internal problems that garbage collectors have to face and specifically when they run in an incremental manner concurrently with the application. And what I mean by that is when your application is running concurrently with the garbage collector, there are some problems that the garbage collector has to identify and fix or prevent. So what are these problems? Let's look at this and understand some of the good abstractions and algorithms that garbage collectors use, especially the modern ones. Now imagine your program is running. This is your application running. And then you have, let's say, your garbage collection cycle. And then again, you have your program and your garbage collection cycle. Now, this is the traditional way how, you know, garbage collectors used to work. So basically what they would do, they'll let the program run up to a certain threshold, the memory limits. Um, then it will trigger, right? And try to scan the entire heap, cover the entire heap, and try to reclaim memory from garbage objects which means it was a stop the world approach. Which is fine for, let's say, small heap sizes. But as soon as you have larger heap sizes, this cycle would take a really long time, right? Which means you're basically stopping the application or your program for a long time. And which is clearly a problem, especially for real time applications, right? Because in real-time applications, your application need to kind of be responsive to the user input or events that are incoming at a high pace. So you cannot afford long pauses. And specifically talking about the JVM collectors or the garbage collectors that are newly uh, added in the JVM, they really want to increase their throughput while decrease the number of times your application is paused. And also they have an upper bound in terms of the pause times, right? So let's look at this problem. So this is definitely not a, you know, a good way. And that's why garbage collectors run concurrently with your program, right? So let's say these are the garbage collection cycles and this is your program. It runs concurrently in an interleaved fashion, which means that it will share the CPU and you know, only for a short period of time, it will take the CPU cycle, uh, do some work, and then give it back to uh, you know, the program, which means this halt or the pause is really less as compared to this one because this was scanning the entire heap. And it means that we cannot scan the entire heap, but rather scan only the relevant areas. And that's when the, you know, the generational garbage collection or even uh, the garbage collectors that we saw in the previous episodes that were divided into smaller regions and so on. So regionalized garbage collectors and so on, they try to optimize on that. Because they don't get to run for a long time, they have really short times and they want to get most out of it. So that's why they use all these, you know, uh, sophisticated mechanisms to do that. But today, what we are going to talk about is uh, the problems related to this concurrent uh, way of working or this concurrent way of collecting garbage. Okay, so let's say your application, which is also popularly called as mutator in the world of garbage collectors, and it means that your application can actually change the state that is used by the garbage collector. And as you can imagine, the state in this case is the object graph, right? And by object graph, we mean these are simply objects that your application uses. And these links are basically references from one object to another, right? So you create link lists, you create tree structures like this one, 
you create some connected components like graphs and um, some other parent-child relations, uh, some lists that point to you know, uh, some other object and so on. So you have always some objects that have connections to other object and that's what state means. And the application as you write can actually change the state. Let's say you have this object graph. Okay, and let's say your tracer, which is the garbage collector uh, tracer that tries to trace all the objects that are reachable, okay? And uh, from the mark and sweep from the previous episode, you can still refer it, but it basically traces the entire object graph and then tries to find what objects are traceable and what are not. And the objects that are non-traceable, they are just collected as garbage and the memory is reclaimed, okay? So this tracing works and now let's say while this has, is done, uh, the developer or the program uh, kills this reference, right? Which means this particular object is garbage now. But the tracer has already traced this, right? Which means when the cycle runs, it will still consider this as a traceable object, right? But this is actually non-traceable and this is called floating garbage. But is it really a problem? Well, it's not a really a problem, it's just a concern because as soon as your garbage collector runs again, this will be untraceable because it will again try to trace this object graph. It won't find this reference and this won't be uh, traceable, so it will be garbage. But yeah, it's not very efficient because you know you, you get really short amounts of time that your garbage can garbage collector can run. So it's not a huge problem, but it is still a concern for the you know if efficiency of garbage collection. Now let's try to understand um, the three color abstraction that garbage collectors use, which is useful in creating a good mental model of how garbage collector uh, basically treats the object states depending on what it has done with these objects and then how it is used to basically get notified whenever something changes in the object, okay? Now let's say you have an object graph, something like this, okay? And then your tracer actually starts tracing the objects. Now, before the tracing starts, every object gets a color, right? And uh, every object gets a white color. So everything here is going to be white before the tracing starts, okay? Now, as soon as a node is visited, it is marked as another color, which is gray, okay? And so this becomes gray, which means garbage collector knows that, okay, I have visited this node, but I haven't processed it completely. And by that, it means the connected nodes are not processed. Now, as soon as it goes here, it will make this as gray. And then let's say it is using breadth first search. So it will also go here, it will convert this as gray. Now at this point, because um, this node has all its children visited, this will convert its state into black. So there's the third color, okay? So initially everything is white, then as soon as it is visited, it becomes gray. As soon as it is completely processed, it becomes black. So these colors are used to kind of understand the abstraction and the mental model of how these garbage collector states work. Now, similarly, this becomes gray, and then once it goes here, visits this, so this becomes black, okay? So basically, every node is changing some colors, and of course, this is done by setting some bits. Now, the problem when your application is also running concurrently, what it can do is, let's say this becomes black, and this is still 
let's say gray because it is visited. So this also becomes gray. Now your application, what it does is, because this is just tracing, right? This object is still uh, accessible. So what your application can do is basically create a new reference to another object here. Now what this means is, as soon as it is done, it gets basically W because it's the initial state, the white. Now this tracing is done, right? Similarly, the tracer will go here, it will just mark everything. Now when the sweep cycle runs, it will, uh, it will look at the object states, right? And it will say that, okay, this node has been processed, but I could not basically go here and it's white, which means this is garbage, right? And I think you can already imagine that this is a serious problem because you are basically reclaiming something that is not a garbage. And this is a flaw in this algorithm. But it's not really a flaw in the algorithm, right? Like the three color abstraction works fine. The problem here is that your application is actually changing the state and without notifying the garbage collector or let's say without changing the color back. But what options, uh, what options do you have? Basically what you need to do is you need a mechanism such that whenever your application changes something in terms of references like swapping references or deletion of references or adding new references, it needs to notify the garbage collector. Let's see how. Now there is a thing called barrier, right? Which basically means for any action that the application performs on an object, there is this barrier. And what this barrier will do, depending on the type of barrier you, you're using, it will trigger an action. Okay. And this action will actually do the work of notifying the garbage collector in some way. And garbage collector works on the state of the object, right? So basically this trigger will technically change the state of the object. Now let's look at that in a much deeper sense. But first, let's look at the type of barriers. So the first one is load barrier, which is also called read barrier. And the other one is called write barrier, right? Basically load barrier is triggered or comes into action when you load something. The something in this case is the reference or you read a reference for an object. As soon as you read it, and by you I mean the application, load barrier will you know, do its stuff, notify the uh, application and so on. And similarly, you can imagine that the right barrier triggers when and your application tries to write a reference to an object or do some modifications, right? And this will trigger another action. So these are the two types of barriers which are used. These barriers are not the barriers that we use in you know, the, the concurrency models and the synchronization mechanisms, but these are separate barriers used by the garbage collectors. Now, a little note on these type of barriers, right? Typically in your application, you have more reads than writes. Similarly, you have more reads of the references than updation or updates on the references. With this, you can figure out that, okay, if you use a read barrier and in your application, if you read more often, the overhead of triggering this action is going to be more, right? So typically in most applications, writes are less, which means if you use a load barrier, the overhead will be more. And if you use a write barrier, the overhead will be less. Okay. And that's why the modern garbage collectors in the JVM prefer to use write barriers. But there are also cases when garbage collectors use the read barriers. Now this is all fine. And 
this is the way garbage collector actually knows that your application has changed something and without corrupting the memory or not being able to efficiently work, it understands that, okay, something has changed. But what happens to this state, right? What exactly has changed? So let's go back to the previous example and understand that, you know, what happens, let's say you have this, you have this, you have this, and an object graph like this. Now let's say it covers and, you know, uh, becomes black because this is also covered and your application adds a new node, which is white here. Now, since it is writing a reference to an object, write barrier will be used. And then as soon as it is done, it will change its color back to gray. Now, since it is gray, the tracer will know, okay, this is not completed. So then it will go here, try to see where it needs to go and then mark it as gray. Eventually it will try to read its children, mark it as black, and then consider this cycle as complete. Which means any change that application makes to your object graph, garbage collector will change the color, try to address that change right away. So with this, I hope the problem of running garbage collection concurrently was clear. We looked at the three color abstraction just to understand the good mental model of the garbage collector algorithms. In the next episode, we are going to look at G1GC, ZGC, and Shenandoah garbage collector. And these garbage collectors use all these concepts that we just talked about. They are generational, regionalized, and concurrent garbage collectors that really aim to reduce the pause times of the application. And they really have an upper bound even with larger heap sizes. So if you like this episode, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you want to refer to the previous episodes, I have posted all the links in the description. If you like this series specific to JVM internal series, please become a member and join the inner circle. Thank you and see you in the next episode.